now we know what list nodes are and how the class is created for that list node, we're going to look at how they interact with one another in this video. What I've done first is I've written the code to create a node and I've called it start. And start creates a node using the constructor that we looked at in the last video that's going to have a memory reference and a value. That value is going to be apple and the next value in the list is null because there is no other node inside of this list. Now let's look at a list that has three values. We're going to create three values, apple, banana, and cherry. Now this syntax might look odd to you, but it's just really the second parameter for this list node is going to be the next list node banana, and the next parameter for this one is going to be the, the list node cherry, saying I'm going to point to banana next, I'm going to point to cherry next, and the last one of course is going to be null. We'll see what this does using a visual here. We create apple with a memory reference to banana, and then we create another node that has cherry as the value, and it's referenced by banana. So they are now linked together with the last node having null, meaning we've reached the end. So if we wanted to print out the values inside of the node using the list node class that we have just created, system out print line start, which is our starting node, dot get value. So that value is going to be apple. Then if we wanted to get the next value in the list, we would say start dot get next, which is get next refers to this, which is pointing to this node and then get value and it would print banana. And now we're going to get the last value, which is going to be cherry. And what it does is it says, I'm going to start at the first node, look at its memory reference, go to the next node, look at its memory reference, and then go to this node and look at the value inside of the node, which is cherry. Here's another way that I could create a linked list. It might seem backwards, but I'm actually assigning each one a value. So the first one that I create is cherry, and it's going to be null. What I do next is I create B, which is banana, and its reference is going to be A, the whole node right here. And so now the first thing in our list is banana or node B, which links to node A. And then finally node C, which is apple, is going to reference B, is going to reference A, and we have created our linked list. And if we wanted to print it out, same thing. We would start at the node at the beginning of the list, which is C, and then if we wanted to get the next value, we'd say c.getNext.getValue, and then finally get next, get next, get value. Now we could, because we have named all of these, we could just say b.getValue or a.getValue, but it's not common to actually name each node inside of the list. What is common is to just know where's the beginning of my list and work your way down from there. And in some cases, knowing the end of the list and working your way up from there. Now, let's talk about how to print nodes. We saw how to do it with system out print line statements, but what if we wanted to do it with a while loop? And you notice the important thing here is null. We're looking for null, and as long as we don't have null, we know that there's another value inside of the list. So what we do is we say, we're going to say start.getValue. The value inside of there is apple, so we print it out. Now, we iterate again because start is not equal to null, and we would get apple again. So you can see that this would be an infinite loop because we're never progressing to the next node. So what we need to do is add this line of code in our while loop. So start equals start.getNext. So the way that we're going to print it out is we're going to say, okay, start.getValue, that's going to print apple. Then we say start is equal to start.getNext. So that would be banana. Banana is not equal to null, so it would print banana. So start.getValue would be banana. And then we get the next value, and that would be the cherry node. And then start would equal start.getNext. Well, start.getNext is null, and so start would be equal to null, and this loop would stop, and we would print out all the members inside of the list. Looking through a linked list might seem odd to you at first, but with more practice, it will get easier, and the idea should hopefully grow on you.